discuss some of the mechanisms by which the heart is able to normalize the mean arterial pressure. In a situation where the mean arterial pressure drops, such as with hemorrhage or with sepsis, as you can see on the left side of the diagram, that mean arterial pressure can drop and cause a reaction by the body. Some of those first reactions are, for example, the medullary vasomotor center. This vasomotor center senses decreased baroreceptor firing from the carotid and the aortic arch baroreceptors. This causes an increased amount of sympathetic activity out to the heart and the vasculature. Epinephrine and norepinephrine are released from nerve terminals of these sympathetic nerves, and they bind to the beta-1 and the alpha-1 receptors in the heart and the vasculature. The beta-1 receptor causes increased heart rate and increased contractility, which leads to an increased cardiac output. When norepinephrine and epinephrine bind to alpha-1 receptors, they cause an increased venous return by venoconstriction in the large veins, which causes an increased cardiac output, and also increased arteriolar vasoconstriction, which leads to an increased total peripheral resistance and an increased blood pressure. A decrease in mean arterial pressure can also activate the juxtaglomerular apparatus, or the JGA. This is also known as the macula densa. This senses a decreased mean arterial pressure, which activates the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. Renin is released by juxtaglomerular cells in the kidney, and renin then is cleaved into angiotensin 1 and angiotensin 2. Angiotensin 2 causes vasoconstriction, and this vasoconstriction causes an increase in total peripheral resistance. Angiotensin II also binds to receptors in the adrenal cortex and causes the release of aldosterone. Aldosterone causes the retention of salt and water by blood volume and increases cardiac output. All of these mechanisms serve to increase mean arterial pressure. When mean arterial pressure increases too much and the heart stretches, atrial natriuretic peptide, or ANP, is released from the ventricular and atrial muscle in the heart. This peptide is a diuretic and is released in response to increased blood volumes and causes generalized vascular relaxation. It also constricts the efferent renal arterioles and dilates the afferent arterioles. This leads to increased urine production. Atrial natriuretic peptide is thought to be the anti-aldosterone in that it allows the patient to escape from aldosterone. Some of the mechanisms by which the body is able to respond to increased or de decreased blood pressure are shown here. Some of the receptors are the aortic arch and the carotid sinus baroreceptors. The aortic arch baroreceptors transmit information via the vagus nerve to the medulla and respond only to increased blood pressure. Carotid sinus baroreceptors transmit information about blood pressure via the glossopharyngeal nerve, or cranial nerve 9, to the nucleus of the solitary tract of the medulla. These baroreceptors respond to decreases and increases in blood pressure. Regarding these baroreceptors in general, the way they work is, during periods of hypotension, there is a decreased mean arterial pressure, and this causes a decreased amount of stretch on these baroreceptors. And remember that these baroreceptors are nerve clusters inside the wall of the artery. This decreased stretch leads to decreased afferent baroreceptor firing. This afferent baroreceptor firing decrease then increases the efferent sympathetic firing from the central nervous system to the heart and the blood vessels and it causes a decrease in the efferent parasympathetic stimulation to the heart and blood vessels. In general, what this causes is increased vasoconstriction, increased heart rate, and increased contractility, which leads to an increase in blood pressure. This is the response commonly seen in severe hemorrhage. The central nervous system increases its output of sympathetic firing and decreases its output of parasympathetic firing. 
Another common situation is carotid massage. In general, in medicine, we use carotid massage to slow down rapid heart rates. When we increase pressure on the carotid artery, we cause stretch of the carotid body baroreceptor. That increased stretch is sensed as what's thought of by the body of an increased blood pressure. So therefore, by increasing the stretch, we increase the afferent baroreceptor firing back to the central nervous system. The central nervous system thinks that the blood pressure is very high, and it sends out a response back to the heart to decrease the heart rate. This is why carotid massage slows down rapid heart rates, because it slows down AV nodal conduction velocity in an attempt to decrease blood pressure. Chemoreceptors, both peripheral and central, are located in the vascular system as well. The peripheral chemoreceptors are located in the carotid and aortic bodies, and these respond to decreases in the partial pressure of oxygen. A decrease in the partial pressure of oxygen in the blood to less than 60 millimeters of mercury, or an increase of the partial pressure of carbon dioxide, as well as a decrease in the pH of blood, leads to a stimulation of these peripheral chemoreceptors. Central chemoreceptors are located in the central nervous system and are bathed by cerebrospinal fluid. These chemoreceptors respond to changes in pH and a partial pressure of carbon dioxide of the brain's cerebrospinal fluid. The cerebrospinal fluid is influenced by arterial carbon dioxide. These central chemoreceptors do not directly respond to the partial pressure of oxygen. These central chemoreceptors are responsible for the Cushing reaction. Remember that the Cushing reaction is started by an increase in intracranial pressure, which can be caused by injury, for example. That constricts the arterioles and causes cerebral ischemia. That cerebral ischemia is sensed by the brain as possible hypotension and that possible hypotension is acted on by the body so that the body generates hypertension in an attempt to increase cerebral blood flow. That hypertension, in turn, leads to a reflex bradycardia through the vagus nerve. And so the Cushing's triad, which is seen in brain injury, is that of hypertension, bradycardia, and respiratory depression. The respiratory depression is usually caused by direct damage of whatever process is causing the cerebral ischemia.